So yeah, my name is Vojtěch Plášek. I'm currently working at Red Hat as a software engineer, uh, in particular in a security compliance team. And uh, I've been a Linux user for 12 years, but uh, I've uh, I've used Windows before, so I think I can kind of compare. Uh, I started with uh, Windows 95 up to XP, and I switched to switched to Linux. Um, yeah. Uh, I have also experience with uh, various Linux distributions. Uh, I'm using Arch Linux and Fedora mainly, but I have also experience with other distributions as you can see, but mainly from an administrator point of view. And uh, I'm maintaining a Fedora project, which uh, we will talk uh, briefly about later. So basically the goal of this talk is to introduce you very briefly uh, the situation for blind users when they want, if they want to use Linux desktop, what are the problems, but also what things are working quite well right now. And then we will move to Fedora, which is a project which tries to improve this. And then in the end, I would like to sum up what you can do about that, because this is, this is basically aimed at, at you as, uh, as uh, developers, as QAs, as, uh, but also as users, documentation and stuff like that. So let's move forward. So, yeah. So a little bit of terminology at start so that uh, we know what we are talking about. So the screen reader. Screen reader is a piece of software which is crucial for visually impaired and especially blind users of any computer. Maybe you've heard that. Maybe, for example, on Android, you stumbled into accessibility settings and you turned on something and the phone started speaking at you and gestures stop working <laughs> and so that's a screen reader <laughs> uh, basically what it does is that it uh, tries to uh, collect information from the screen which are relevant for us uh, the examples are mentioned here on the slides so uh, i would stop at the first one what element has focus what is focus focus is basically i don't know if you've tried but if you for example open a any uh, web browser and you start pressing tab you will move around uh, the website and the tab will move you around links and the form fields and they will become a bit highlighted and that's that means that they have focus and basically you can start interacting with them interacting with them uh, through keyboard or other input devices so that's what screen reader does it reads notifications it allows us to like explore the screen up to some some point uh, the part about the hair, co hair color on the slides, uh, this is something uh, which I would like to mention as well, especially for content creators. I believe you heard about alt text or alternative texts, which is an uh, element uh, uh, which you can put uh, next to the image or is a part of the image definition. I don't know if you've been putting photos on Facebook or Instagram, uh, there is an offer to uh, accompany the picture with the alt text. And that's something, uh, which is presented to us by a screen reader when we uh, explore the image. Because if you do not put there any alt text, we will just hear image. And I'm like, yeah, thanks, image, great. But if you put there alt text, uh, it, it, is, it helps a lot, I must say. Uh, the Linux screen reader is Orca. Uh, that's basically so far the only mature screen reader which can be used in a graphical environment. There are more of them which can be used in a text console. Basically, one of them is essentially part of, a, of kernel. Uh, it's called SpeakUp, but that's not something we're gonna, uh, we are gonna talk about today. Uh, voice synthesis uh, is a piece of software which basically takes text and outputs it as a sound. It can sound, for example, like this. Speak enabled. Leaving list, period. Black small square. Voice synthesis dash a piece of software which reads text aloud. Yeah, so that's that's Speech what disabled. I'm listening to basically all day at work at home and stuff like that. Unfortunately, if you are Czech, if you are Czech, uh, which is my case, uh, you don't have uh, much choice on Linux currently. If you speak English or or for example Russian, uh, you have you have uh, more choices. And this is basically the output which most users are consuming because it doesn't require anything else except for speakers. 
Uh, then we have a Braille display, which is a piece of hardware, quite special. Uh, and this piece of hardware uh, has a special mechanical part, which can convert uh, text input into Braille output. And it converts one line at a time. The line is usually 40 or 80 characters long. And I'm using it right now so that I can read the slides without you listening to the to the speech, basically. And it's also good when you do code review and you want to keep track of indentation and stuff like that. So that's that's another important thing to consider. Quite a lot of users use that. ATSPI, it's more for uh, developers and engineers. It's basically something which you might encounter when reading documentation. And it's uh, it's a piece of software which basically provides a bus for uh, graphical toolkits to send the accessibility related events and these events are then picked up by the screen reader so enough of terminology let's move forward so what is now possible on linux well that's quite a lot of that working with console application uh that's actually one thing i really like about linux that it uh, uses a console a lot I mean, you can accomplish lots of things on the console because it's just text. And text is very easy to interpret by the screen reader if the emulator works as expected. So I use it a lot, but I, it's not a silver bullet because of course, if you are learning uh, or if you are teaching, I want to say if you are teaching beginners about Linux, you don't want always to start like uh, teaching them how to work with bash. And at the same time, not all things can be accomplished in the console. For example, Midnight Commander or VI, uh, uh, VI, uh, uh, VI improved text editors are unfortunately not accessible in the console. Uh, we can do web browsing. I will show you. Uh, okay, I will show you now actually uh, how it works. So if I open, if I turn on the speech, I open the new tab. I hope you can see that. And Man, I will not be very inventive. Me. Search with duck, duck, go or enter address editable combo box then conf dot cv. Loading. Please wait. Document web. Leaving list period. Leaving navigation period. Leaving banner period. Then conf dot cv 2022 document web. Finished loading then conf dot cv 2022 period. Page has three landmarks, two headings, one form, eight visited links, 23 unvisited links, blank. Can you, maybe can, can someone just write in the chat if, if it's understandable at least a bit? Because if not, it doesn't make sense. And if, if you can, Zdeniak, uh, tell me. Uh, yep, it is understandable. Cool. Yeah. So now, like I'm on a website, I can use my arrows. About. Link. Conference themes. Link. News. Link. Schedule. Link. So I and now I can use the tab key and you will even, you should be able to see how the focus changes over the links. Conference theme. News. Link. Schedule. Link. Blog. Link. But I can also explore the page by, for example, moving to next heading. About them conf heading level one. And now I can continue reading. Memconf.cv 2022 is the 14th annual, comma, free, comma, Red Hat sponsored community conference for developers, comma. Uh, uh, and so on, so on. So this is how web browsing Speech works. Disabled. Basically, we can we can use quite a lot of web applications. We can interact with forms and stuff like that. So basically, I'm using, for example, Google Docs a lot, uh, Facebook. Uh, up to some extent, although it's not the most accessible thing I've ever seen, um, and stuff like that. So this is possible quite well. There is, there is even we can use even multiple browsers uh, since, like I don't know, one year ago. Uh, yeah. So then we can do we can do um, uh, email, of course. We can program, especially in VS Code, which is very accessible uh we can play music and stuff like that text processing spreadsheet processing file management so that looks pretty good okay let's move to the less happy part so some things which are painful currently just to just that you know so sound editing is unfortunately quite problematic 
uh, especially when compared to Windows and Mac. Uh, the, basically, the most accessible sound editor on Linux is Audacity, uh, but it has quite significant limitations. You can do a lot, but sometimes you do not get the proper feedback about what you are doing and stuff like that. Unfortunately, there is no like very comfortable OCR solution. Like there exist, but they are definitely not that straightforward. Again, as compared to other platforms, uh, it's usually because there is a lack of developers. But let's say uh, it's it's explained on the slides. It can stop working suddenly because some uh, library changes, and it takes quite a long time to uh, to fix it. Uh, so it's 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 not the greatest. It, it was worse, but it's still not the greatest. Viewing PDF files is also a bit problematic. Still, unfortunately, as it's on the slides, graphical graphical viewers have problems. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Like it, it's just not reliable. Uh, and then, like there is a there is a way how we can extract basically the text layer from a PDF file and read the resulting file. But again, it's not straightforward. Uh, it's it's not the experience which you can compare with other platforms, unfortunately. Playing games, yeah, like this is here just more just for fun. I mean, that's quite like not surprising because like there are not that many Linux users as compared to Windows and other users. Uh, so it's quite expected, but again, it can it can be better. <laughs> uh, my coffee, yeah, that makes me really sad because, like, yeah, it would be cool if I didn't need to like get up to my coffee machine and stuff like that. But, uh, I can forgive forgive this so far. Uh, yeah, this was really sad. I found this out just basically before DevCon because uh, basically now, so that you can, I had to make some audio configuration changes so that you can hear my screen reader. And I found out I cannot do that basically from a graphical user interface because wire plumber is just totally inaccessible. Basically the, the screen reader tells me nothing when I open the application. It tells me the window title, but that's it. And uh, viewing PowerPoint presentations, that's something which is probably more important for people who do presentations that uh, it's not, straightforward to view these presentations on Linux. It can be done, but it, again, it's not straightforward. It's probably something which is for a different presentation. It would be quite a long story. So let's move forward. And so that you don't get bored, I have some examples here. So let's go on. Actually, now what I'm using is Fedora with Mate or Mate. I don't know. I'm not he sure how to that. I call it mate, I'm sorry. And uh, actually here I will show you one very interesting bug. Desktop, bottom panel. I top move panel. to the top panel. Frighten. Frighten. And now the focus is on the clock. Can you see that, that it's highlighted a little bit or is it covered by a slide? I, I, would, I would like some feedback. Yeah. It's covered by the slides right now. Yeah. It's covered by slides. How to improve so Linux? I will... So now slides slides should stop be full screen. Is that the case? Uh, now they are full screen, and now we can we can see the panel, but okay. I'm not sure uh, which uh, part That's should be frame. highlighted. Right, yeah. Clock. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they are uh, they are. They are highlighted only a little. Yeah, yeah. So that means that they have focus. And then I move towards the battery. Panel notification area panel. And then I move towards the network. Battery. Network. And I just don't hear anything. It's just like not announcing anything. Either like if it if it was let's say I, I guess we all agree it should, right? uh and this is a long standing bug in mate it's even linked in the presentation so yeah that that's quite nice demo and i must say it's quite frustrating uh because when we when we for example demo uh linux and its accessibility to other uh, people who are interested 
they are like, and wh why this doesn't work? Like, come on, like it, it, it's just it just works everywhere. Why it doesn't work here? And we're like, uh, you know, well, uh, improved, uh, yeah. we we tried and like we we didn't give we didn't get a response basically, or we got a response works for me, but and like when when you open, when you see the bug, you you will understand. And I have a second example, which is more for front-end developers, how how it's easy to do inaccessible application. So I will open uh, GNOME, GNOME uh, to do. Advanced. Oh, I hope so. Computer push button. Push button. Okay. How to improve problems by example. To text to do. Ah, okay. GTD window. So, GTK you see the window. Button, push button. Space. GTK menu button. I would. I would. Again? Yeah, right. And now I will press tab and move around the window. And just, just so you know uh, how much information I get. GTD welcome action card push button space. Yeah, it's a GTD welcome action card. Uh, whatever it is, no idea. GTD welcome action card push button. Space. Again, GTD welcome action card. W what it is? Like what? What? What is, what, is, what is it? Is it the same one or is it something different? I don't know. GTD window. GTK menu button push button. GTK space. menu GTK button. GTK menu okay. button. It's probably open some menu. GTD welcome action card push button. So GT I will open the menu. GTK check button check box checked. Light style. Oh, GTD uh, window frame. Okay. Help. Space. Okay, yeah. I, I got into some menu. There is help. That's about cool. to do. About space. to do space. GTK cool. check button check box checked. And there is some Light. check button. Okay. GTD cool. But like, what 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 else? Like, is, is this everything? Yeah, I mean. I, I did the OCR of the I did the OCR of the window and I, I could see that there is some text, but it's just not accessible for us. We cannot get to that. GTD window. And even GTD. these welcome cards, it's not labeled properly. So we don't know. We have actually no idea what it is for. Yeah, that that that's the biggest problem. So it's super confusing. GTD. I could continue this, with this application. How to uh, but uh, I will not uh, because uh, it, uh, we don't have that much time. Uh, basically, uh, important thing: I'm not like saying that uh, I'm not like here to blame and like to just complain all the time. I'm just showing you how it how it looks for us, how we perceive the applications, and I'm very sure this can be improved because then there are other GNOME applications which which are very accessible. Yeah. So it's only about basically the knowledge and uh, the awareness of the fact that uh, there are blind users who are using screen readers and who would love to use our applications, but they just basically can't. Uh, let's move forward. So Fagora, very shortly, basically, as I said, we were demonstrating uh, uh, Linux distributions and their accessibility on a series of workshops which happened in Brno. They were called Agora. And basically the situation with Linux distributions is that if you try to use a mainstream Linux distribution, like, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't matter, Ubuntu, Fedora, um, Arch, Linux, Debian, whatever, they are usually not accessible from the beginning. Yeah, uh, I will get to that later or i can talk about it now actually basically fedora oh, Vojta, we've had uh, we've hit uh, the 20 minutes mark so 20, now 20 minutes we minutes should minutes. move to the q a or if you want to uh, finish the idea okay i will skip this slide and this slide uh, basically the fedora information uh, you can you can get this from the slides so the point of this, how, how about you? What you can do about that? So, as I said, be aware that we exist and that we want to use the application. If you are doing front end, ask us. There is a link to email conference of our Kaskin reader, which uh, is basically every blind user of Linux is there. And we had a very big success success with this because we get a cooperation with Microsoft 
And I must say the Visual Studio Code is very accessible on Linux, so it, it works. We have proof. And if you are uh, into volunteering, I would like to have some RPM packages for Fedora because Fedora is basically a project which tries to create accessible remix, remix of Fedora. And if you, if nothing, just really please be aware that we are here. Uh, spread the word about us so that other developers also know that we are here. And I think this can be nice, nice cooperation. And the more accessible applications we have, the more users we will have for Linux. And I believe that's something we, we want. So that's everything for me. I'm uh, ready for your questions. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for the great presentation, Vojta. Uh, we have already several questions, so I will try to read them. If if someone is, isn't answered, please write an email to Vojta. Uh, his, uh, I, I will send his email address into the chat after the Q&A. So the, the, first, uh, the first question is, Vojtěch, how would you compare Orca to perhaps commercial alternatives? Is it competitive? Uh, I would say that it's getting it's getting really better, uh, and it's also quite hard to compare because there is no commercial screen reader for Linux. Yeah, so Orca doesn't have a competition on Linux, and if I should compare it to like for example Windows, then the comparison wouldn't be fair because the array of applications is not the same, graphical user interfaces are not the same. But if we if we for example talk about web browsing and stuff like that. So uh, in, in this case, I think it's pretty comparable. Like it's lacking some features, for example, like automatic language switching and stuff like that. But in general, in general, it's doing very well. Another, uh, thank you for your answer. Another question, what about the bootloader and the kernel console? Uh, does a screen reader work there? And if not, would it be important to edit? So thank you. This is a great question. So let's let's split it into two questions. Bootloader, no, there is no screen reader. Uh, of course, like if it if it would be possible, it would be so great. Like because this is basically, uh, it, it's very problematic. We have to do this really really. If we are, uh, I'm blind, but here I'm super blind because like I have totally no idea what I'm doing. Uh, if we talk about kernel console, as I said, there is a speak up. A screen reader which can be connected to uh, to some voice synthesis and actually yesterday or two days ago it saved my my ass because uh, my uh, computer broke during upgrade because i got a power cut and i had to find out what's going on and my graphical interface wasn't wasn't starting i i end up ended up in the console and uh, there i could uh, read what's going on uh, thanks to speak up so it, it works it, it works in the console, but not in the bootloader, unfortunately. Another question, uh, thank you for the answer. Uh, I guess uh, the 80 characters limit for code is relevant for you if you are using uh, a Braille reader. Or is it okay to review code not limited to 80 characters columns? Uh, I think it's okay if the if lines are longer because like, for example, how I do reviews is that I use both at the same time. I use voice synthesis and I use a Braille display. And if I like, I use mainly mainly voice synthesis. And it's, if I'm not sure, for example, like I don't know how many brackets are there, or or if the indentation is correct, I use the Braille display. So I wouldn't say that this limit is important for personally for me. Uh, thank you for the, for the answer. Another question: uh, Would something like Vimperator? Uh, or so work good in in a browser for blind uh, pressing a letter on on the keyboard to navigate around the web page uh, instead of tabbing around. Uh, well, I guess this is uh, some extension. I think I heard about it. Uh, I think it uh, doesn't make much sense because, like, I mean, it could work, but I don't. I'm not sure if I would use that because if you if you noticed. Uh, when I was uh, uh, demoing the web browsing, I can already do this with the screen reader. Yeah, the screen reader, screen reader can navigate me around website by heading, by link, by a form or stuff like that. So it could work, but I'm not sure if it would actually play well with the screen reader. 
Uh, thank you for the answer, Vojta. Uh, we've hit uh, the total time for uh, for this uh, uh, for this talk. So thank you for all for the, all the answers and for the talk. And thank you everyone for joining us uh, on this uh, on this talk. I'm uh, putting the email uh, of of Vojta in, into the chat, and I will uh, I will pass uh, the pass the uns unanswered uh, questions uh, to Vojta through that email. Thank you guys. Yeah, and thank you, Vojta. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention.